was five years old, I started playing the violin. I wanted to be cool. I mean, violin playing when you're five years old in South Florida, a young mm -hmm. black, a young Haitian American person, it, it just wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the bass, it wasn't the guitar, it wasn't the flute. So I had to find a way to make the violin cool. And by cool, I mean relevant. And by relevant, I mean a relationship to me. Mm -hmm. So I had to find a way to make the violin sound like a bass. <laughs> find a way to make the violin sound like an electric guitar. And the distortion. I had to find a way to make the violin sound like an acoustic guitar. You know, like, a, like Sade, you know. Find a way to make the violin sound like a turntable. So all of this was um, about wanting the violin to sound cool, and by cool, in some ways, making the violin not sound like a violin. Mm -hmm. And by that, I'm getting at this notion of not of the violin not becoming, or not even allowing it to be the violin but making it, you know, my violin. So it's very near the bridge. So Ponticello, but it's a little more than that because it's different pressure to get mm -hmm. that grip. Yeah. And then the, the left hand is um, lightly touching the string and a lot of, it's got a wild vibrato. So I can make the violin into a drum. The rings are great, and um, you know you can use rings and even. Um Because, um, you know, like a lot of violins, it just helps to hold the instrument up. Yeah. Um, and it also, quite frankly, it does give, um, it allows the back of the instrument to resonate. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can literally see this space. Mm -hmm. So without, without the shoulder rest there, now the back of the instrument, by default, is resting against my body. Mm -hmm. straight up Paganini almost, I mean, straight up from the classical canon. But in an instant, it can become, you know, Prince. So, you know, it's, I think as people of color, we're always speaking in tongues. So when you do meet a student who says, I want to play hip hop violin, and I, you know, I don't have an interest in classical or jazz or anything, just hip hop, what do you try to tell them to reframe their thinking? 
In order to really play any music well, there are fundamentals. There's fundamentals in sound, in rhythm, in pitch, what have you. And hip-hop music is a very complex music that uses those fundamentals in a very complex manner. So let's learn the fundamentals, and this is how we're going to learn the fundamentals. So sometimes it's just playing a note or playing two notes together, you know? It's kind of boring, not easy to do, but you know. Now, if we think about what Kanye might do with that. Already we're getting into something very complex, and whether or not it's hip-hop, it's taking a fundamental and immediately making it relative to whatever music they're listening to. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of young people are already listening to very complex music because they're listening to Beyonce and Jay-Z and Kanye and hopefully mm -hmm. I can turn them on to Nina mm -hmm. and Lewis mm -hmm. and Thelonious and maybe even Mozart and Schomburg and Schubert and Stravinsky. Mm -hmm. and music education is suffering with this notion of you have to listen to Bach, but many of those teachers don't listen to Eminem. Mm -hmm. See, that's a problem. So that's why I think that by saying we're going to define our relationship. Anything you listen to, I'm going to listen to. Anything I ask you to listen to, hopefully then you'll listen to. You know, it's a lot easier to have a conversation about someone if you say, well, Bach and Eminem have differences. The differences are easy. Look at you and look at me. The differences are easy. There are differences. But what do we have in common? You know? And that's, if you start to lead your life that way, what does Bach and Eminem have in common? Ah, wow. Mm -hmm. Key signature, contrapuntal music, the use of the keyboard, melody, clear symmetrical forms, a patronage system, great performers. I mean, it goes on and on and on. That music absolutely um, changed my life, and in doing so, I do think it saved my life, because I know that statistically speaking, for young black men in this country, the statistics are still dire. I got into Vanderbilt University because of the violin in Nashville. I got into the University of Michigan because of the violin. These were all scholarships um, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I found my way to Harlem, African-American Zion, because of violin playing. I paid my rent. I've always been able to find my way because of the opportunities and the money and the scholarships that those opportunities bring mm -hmm. um, because of um, violin playing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, those notes, it's like currency, you know, it's like a wave. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a string vibrating goes up and down mm -hmm. like a wave. You know, as a Haitian person, currency, a current is something that's very important. It's transformative, lava las, mm -hmm. something that washes over you. Mm -hmm. This is my life raft. You know, really, this is um, this is the thing that's kind of carried me and has taken me, well, literally around the world.